Hey everyone, in this video we'll be talking about how to build an Instagram newsfeed. So we'll be going through an IS systems design interview question. It is similar to the interview questions you might be asked at big tech companies. And today we'll be going through an example of one of these problems. I'll be giving a solution as well as talking about some of the strategies and tips I would use to answer this question. Keep in mind that this video focuses specifically on the mobile app design rather than on the internal implementation of the backend. We need to design a simple version of the newsfeed you see in the Instagram app. The app should show photos in a server-determined order in a vertical list view with infinite scroll. The first step in a systems design interview is always to clarify the requirements. It is essential to show that you are asking questions and not making random assumptions. Of course, we will not implement all features of the news feed screen, but we will focus on the simplified version you see on the mockup. There are repeating interface blocks. Each post has an author, photo, caption and likes. Ok, let's write down all the features we need to implement. There will be, first, a newsfeed of posts. Secondly, as you know, there are different types of posts in Instagram. Photos, photo albums, videos and ads. Let's consider at least two types of posts. Plain pictures and albums. Uh, this will immediately make our implementation extensible for the future. Each post will have the author's name and avatar, caption and like count. Also, let's implement the ability to like posts, but leave the comments uh, out of the scope. Remember that we need to implement infinite scrolling, which should work fast enough. Do we need offline mode? Of course, we will cache the data and the user will be able to see the latest state of his newsfeed, even without the internet. It is considered good practice in an interview to always ask about the scale of our service and the amount of data. In our case, we need to understand how many posts can be on the server for one user. Let's assume 10,000 posts. Great. Uh, let's now look at the solution plan. After clarifying the requirements, we will analyze the data model. Then we'll discuss and design the API. The most exciting part here will be the pagination and image loading. Next, storage and data caching policy on the client. After that, we'll join architectural diagram of the main blocks of our solution. At this stage, we'll discuss the relationships between objects and the data flow. Next, we'll go a little deeper into the UI implementation. And at the end, we'll discuss the remaining architectural questions. Let's start with the data model. Let me drop it here. Um, we'll need a post object. It will have post ID, type, author, like count, caption, location, and uh, photo URLs. Since we can have posts of different types, a photo or a photo album, we will store the corresponding value in the type field. Photo URLs uh, is an array of the URLs of users' photos. There will be one element in the array for a post with only one photo. Please note that we do not store binary files directly in the post object, but instead store links to photos, because it would be a bad idea to store files directly in the database. If we needed more flexibility, we could make two separate objects here, a post and a photo. But for this simplest implementation, we don't have to do this. Next is the user object. With fields, uh, user ID, name and avatar image URL. This object will be returned in the author field of the post object. And the last object is a like with fields user ID, uh, post ID, and successfully sent. Uh, this object is needed to implement the ability to like posts in the feed. I'm getting ahead of myself a bit, but the successfully sent field is needed to send likes in offline mode. Okay, I think this completes our draft version of the data model, and we can move to the hot topic of API. To get the data, we use the REST API. 
we can create an appropriate get feed method to get and use feed. It is important to take into account that we need to make an infinite scroll of the feed, which can contain up to 10,000 posts. It would be wrong to receive them all at once with one request, because it would work very slowly. Therefore, we will need pagination to get the feed in batches. There are two main pagination implementations, offset-based and cursor-based. You have probably encountered uh, offset-based pagination before. This is the most straightforward and naive implementation. We usually pass the limit and offset parameters to the request. They determine how many items we request and starting from which element we should start. Or sometimes we immediately pass a page number to request a bundle of elements at once. This implementation doesn't work well when the server state changes. In this case, we will have duplicates or some elements will disappear. This can be circumvented by using hacks on a client, but it will still lead to inefficient requests to the server. The second method of pagination is cursor-based. In this method, we select some kind of object identifier as a cursor and request elements after this object. The identifier can be an ID, a timestamp, or something else that uniquely characterizes the object. In our case, a post in the newsfeed. Sometimes the server may return the cursor along with the response. If we compare pagination implementations with data structures, then offset pagination is an array and cursor pagination is a linked list. Cursor-based pagination works fine with variable output on the server, but it is important that the sorting of elements remains unchanged. In our case, the um, cursor-based pagination is perfect, because posts in the newsfed will always be sorted the same way, a new post can be added to the beginning of the feed. As a cursor, we can use the post ID of the last received post. So we will pass three parameters to our news feed request method. Post ID, limit, and a page. The limit is the number of items we want to request. And the page parameter can take two values, previous or next. We use this to implement head fetching because we have two cases, when the user just scrolls down or when we have a new post, which means they need to be added at the top of the newsfeed. Great. We also need a method to send users likes. In the simplest case, we can make a post method that takes an array of post IDs and values. In the value parameter, we will pass a boolean so that you can either like or remove like from a post. It is useful to have the option to send multiple likes in the same request. An interesting feature here is that if the user doesn't have the internet, we still need to display his likes in the interface. In other words, do an optimistic model of setting likes. But the likes need to be sent to the server sooner or later anyway, so we will need a special service in the application that will save all the likes to the database. And then try to resend them to the server later. That's why we added successfully send field to the like object to know whether it was sent to the server or not. As an additional topic for discussion at the interview, the interviewer can dive into the discussion of this issue. Okay, what about downloading images? Images can be of huge size, so don't embed the photo body directly in the metadata returned by the API. The solution here is distributed file storage, such as Amazon S3. Images will be stored in it, and in the newsfeed response, we will only attach a link to an object in this storage. This should solve the problem. If you have any questions about the API, I'll be happy to answer them in the comments to this video. Great, let's move on and discuss the storage. We need to store metadata and images. For metadata, we need to choose a storage method and a framework for managing object graph. There are three main options, core data, realm, and serializing objects and storing them on disk. In our case, I would prefer core data as a native iOS option. If it's necessary to implement the app on Android, 
I will look towards Realm as a cross-platform solution. Another important thing is that the local cache of the newsfeed is essential to prevent too many API requests from being sent. We can add a timestamp to the cache. In this case, if the cache is less than two minutes old, we use it instead of an API call for the newsfeed. Okay, what happens if the user unloads the application from memory and then loads it back? Obviously, we don't want to re-download the images. They need to be cached. There are two options here, an SURL cache, a box solution from Apple, or a third-party library with this functionality. For example, SD Web Image. What SD Web Image does is it loads the image in the background thread so you are not blocking the UI main thread during the download. Furthermore, it will also disk cache all the images you've downloaded and never re download an image from the same URL. You can clear the cache based on the time or space used. Another option, IS and SURL cache implements this caching of raw HTTP responses out of the box. However, this means that each time the image is pulled from the cache, it has to transform the raw data into an UI image. SD Web Image, on the other hand, caches the UI image representation, which saves you this overhead. That's why I'll go with SD Web Image. Also, for those interested, there is a version of this library for Swift UI called SD Web Image Swift UI. Okay, let's move on to the architecture schema. On the left is the application structure and on the right is the backend. Everything is simple on the server, REST API and image storage separately. The application structure is divided into layers, the presentation layer and the business logic. As you know, there are many different architecture patterns for UI organization, MVC, MVVM, Viper, etc. With competent handling and skillful decomposition, you can beautifully organize the architecture using any of these patterns. For our problem, I'll use MVVM. In the diagram, you can see two main blocks, view controller and view model. In MVVM, the view controller is essentially a stupid and simple view, and the view model is engaged in obtaining the necessary data for displaying. View model uses services to get data newsfeed service and like service. Services contain the main business logic and orchestrate the work of dependencies, network clients and storage. Network client essentially just makes requests to the server according to certain parameters. And storage is responsible for storing data in RAM and in the database. At the service level, we decide where to get data from, to request it from the server or to take it from the database how much to request and whether to cache. Newsfeed service will be responsible for receiving and caching newsfeed, and the like service will receive and send likes. Okay, how can all these dependencies be put together? I use a dependency injection container, specifically the Swinject library to build dependencies. Swinject is a lightweight dependency injection framework for Swift apps. It allows you to split your app into loosely coupled components, which can then be maintained and tested more easily. View controller will be the root of our dependency graph, a view model will be injected into it, and the necessary services, etc., will be inserted into it. The advantages of this solution are that we achieve the implementation of the dependency inversion principle and also make our code more testable. For all our dependencies, you need to specify an object scope. An object scope is a configuration option to determine how an instance provided by a DI container is shared in the system. For objects that don't store state, I would use default scope. It always creates a new instance when you resolve the dependency. And for objects with state, I would use a singleton scope. Now, let's take a closer look at the UI layer of the app. To begin with, the question is, how do we implement Infinite Scroll? The main UI kit candidates are UI Table View and UI Collection View. How to choose? You have to consider the restrictions on UI Table View before making a decision. It's a single column, and you can only customize the cells, but not section backgrounds and such. 
So if you have a straight up list of things with no extra frills that looks like a standard IS view, then use UI table view. If you have custom insets or a border around each section, use UI collection view. In our case, I'll use UI collection view. As you can see, the logic of filling the collection view with data lies in the view model. Models array is also stored there, an array of posts to display. Initially, news feed service will return us an array of objects of the post type, but for display, it will be convenient to translate these objects into special view models for collection view cells. I named them cell view model photo and cell view model album. Two different types because we support two different types of posts. This solution is convenient and expandable for the future because we'll be able to add new types of posts or cells with advertising. The view model will contain all the necessary data for rendering texts, pictures, the number of likes, uh, the, and the is liked field, whether we like this post ourselves. When the cell for item at method of UI collection view is triggered, we can dequeue cells of the desired type, fill them with data and present them. To display photos, we will use a standard UI image view, but we will not immediately display the image. We will send an asynchronous request using SDWeb image. When the picture is downloaded, we will show it in a cell with a smooth appearance animation. What else do we need to implement the infinite scroll, which can be scrolled very quickly by the user? We need to preload images that are still off the screen, but the user can scroll through them soon. We can use UI Collection View data source prefetching. It's a handy feature of the UI Collection View for prefetching data. But if the user scrolls quickly, we run into a starvation case, where we might end up waiting on requests that are now off screen. There are a few mitigations here. The ability to cancel or pause requests. We can use the cancel prefetching method for this. Also, in your cell, you can cancel the image load when it's going to get reused. Or we can initiate a data request only after the user pauses scrolling. Great, we've covered most of the core architecture problems of the newsfeed. What else can you be asked at the interview? The interviewer can dive into the topic of sending and receiving likes and comments. There may also be a conversation about photo upload and the difficulties of this process. And, of course, they may ask you to tell more about meta signatures and data flow between entities. That's it. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to support my channel, please like the video and leave comments. I'll be happy to answer your questions about architecture, in this video, I'm using a Draw.io screencast instead of a whiteboard. I hope it's more convenient for you to watch. Thank you again and have a nice day.